Welcome, everybody, to Blissfully Aware, the show in which three opinionated people discuss what's going on in fandom and nerd news in general. I'm Bliss, and as always, I'm joined by my two lovely co-hosts, Kelty and Kendra. Hi! Hello! Hello, everyone, once again, to the podcast. (laughs) Trying out something new. <laughs> Saying more words. It's working. <laughs> for this audio format. <laughs> so, how are y'all? Good week? No, yeah, it was fine. I mean, does anyone have a good week anymore? No. <laughs> um, did you guys see the new Thor trailer? I did. I did. I thought it was I want to talk about it. Yeah. I, uh... See, I, I really did like the first Thor movie way back in 2010. Uh, directed by Kenneth Branagh, famous Shakespearean actor and director, who I, I think, was a genius move in, in hiring him... Uh, back when the MCU was very young and still kind of wobbly, hiring him to do the soap opera space viking family cosmic drama um, amongst the gods type movie that they ended up making. <laughs> I feel, yes, like, at least prior to, like, the turn toward, like, a more comedic, uh, a comedic tone, that Kenneth Branagh doing the first Thor movie and, and treating these larger than life characters like like something out of a Greek tragedy or something out of an actual Nordic myth was was a super genius move because that so easily could have been stupid over the top overdone cheesy melodrama the kind of which like like a Batman v Superman type thing mm. the kind of which just falls so flat and I think that Kenneth Branagh's experience as uh, as a Shakespearean actor and director helped him ride that really narrow line of like larger than life, over the top, cosmic, godlike characters, while also at the heart maintaining like a family drama between siblings that made it somewhat relatable. It wasn't just all like made up sci-fi jargon and people shouting weird nordic words mm. <laughs> also helped the fact that uh chris hemsworth and uh tom hiddleston had crazy good on sc- on screen chemistry they were great foils to each other um and chris hemsworth's really funny like i feel like yeah. you notice it in the first movie again if you're like me and a psychopath and you really like the first thor, thor movie and you think it's the best phase one mcu movie um he he he's actually really funny and likable. And then in the later like Avengers movies, when you see him, and then in the second Thor movie that wasn't that great, he just has this like humorless scowl seriousness about him all the time. It's not really suited to the character. Uh-uh. But then Taika Waititi, I guess, realized that Chris Hemsworth's really funny, and the concept of cosmic space Vikings is really funny, and we should we should have some laughs with it. And then they did. But I really like the first Thor movie. Um, I think it's one of the the better Phase One movies, uh, and I really liked Kenneth Branagh. Apparently, working with Marvel was a bit of a nightmare, which is why he didn't come back, which was a shame. But I understand. And it's also why the second one sucked so bad. Yeah, the second one's real bad because no one knew what to do with Thor. I guess other than Kenneth Branagh and Taika Waititi, other than these two very different directors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. But I am I am looking forward to to where they take Thor's character because I actually he is my favorite Avenger. Uh, I for one, people at least in my stupid corner of the internet got like fake outraged over the treatment of Thor's character in uh, the last two Avengers films, Infinity War and Endgame. Um, brief recap: uh, Thor is like nearly catatonically depressed at the at the uh the beginning of Endgame for most of Endgame because uh after after years uh of trying to to write his family and save it and 
get everyone back together into some semblance of the family that he knows and loves from childhood, uh, they're all dead. His mother's dead, his father's dead, his adopted brother was killed gruesomely in front of him after coming faking his own death a few times, and then they fail to stop the supervillain, and half of the universe sentient life forms blink out of existence. So yeah, he's he and the other escaped Asgardians are just living on the coast in Sweden, just hanging out, just not doing anything. <laughs> and he's like, he's just playing video games with the rock monster from Thor Ragnarok, whose name I never remember. It's like Korg or something. Um, it's Taika Waititi. It's Taika Waititi <laughs> voices him. And he's like, got a beard and dreadlocks because he hasn't combed his hair and he's like gained weight. And he's just like, just sad, sadly, parasuicidally depressed. And people, at least, again, in my stupid corner of the internet where everyone's too sensitive, uh, thought that this was, like, somehow making fun of depression or making fun of people with clinical depression, people who are suicidal. And I was like, no, they're not! <laughs> like, it is played for laughs a little bit, again, because Chris Hemsworth's a funny actor, and... Seeing Thor, the character who is literally like a deity and is famous in a, in a film full of ripped superhero bods. He is famous for his amazing fucking Adonis physique. Just Chris Hemsworth has. He's a freak of nature and he's beautiful. And yes, it's funny to see him in a fat suit and just be a schlub. And like the thing about Thor is that he's very blunt. And so, just oftentimes, he says things in a blunt way that is funny. And so he's like, no, I don't care anymore. I'm just, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play some World of Warcraft or whatever the fuck. And I don't care about superheroing and, and get, get out of my village or whatever. But his depression, his like suicidal ideation is not for jokes. No. Like, he means that shit. And they have several cases where, he is like, oh, it's a suicide mission? Sign me up. Like, yeah. I'll do it. That's great. I don't have anything to live for anymore. Yeah. And it's it's played sadly. <laughs> well, and I also, like, I have news. Like, depressed people make jokes. Yes. It's all we do sometimes. <laughs> like, we have, <laughs> we have nothing. Except our sense of humor. It's the only thing keeping us alive most of the time. We're going to be making jokes about how we don't care and how we've gained weight and how we don't... Nothing means anything nothing to means us anything. anymore. Yes. Like, and it bothered me that people were like, this is making fun of people who struggle with this. And it's like, no, it's not. This is... <laughs> This, this is, is relatable. The, this is the real shit, man. This is what being catatonically depressed is like. And yeah, so anyway, uh we can talk more about that, I guess, because I, I I thought that uh Thor's treatment in Endgame was was absolutely fine. It was the logical place for that character to go because I feel like he had perhaps suffered the most yeah. out of anyone. He was the only one who had the last member of their family crushed to death in fucking Josh Brolin's purple meaty mitt right in front of them. And <laughs> despite literally like, oh, what is, what fucking happens in... Yeah, they like... Meets, I don't know, I was catatonically He depressed. meets Peter Dinklage and he like rips a star in half and stuff to forge the Warhammer and whatever. Right. Goes goes through a lot. It and and still fails! Yes, mm -hmm. kill can only kill me if I die. That's fucking inspirational shit, I don't care. That's fucking um, beautiful, man. Uh... And then to still fail, yeah, yeah, I, I, thank goodness that, uh, Tessa Thompson is there to fucking keep him alive and breathing, <laughs> otherwise he just would have jumped into the sea, I feel. Yeah. But now, seems that, like, from the trailer, he's, he's found some peace. He's coming seems, around a little. He's doing, oh god, the bit where he's doing the fucking cross-training with the giant chains. Yeah, <laughs> that shit cracked me up. God. Yeah, like getting it's the strongest, the strongest Avenger, Avenger, on, his Avenger hat. on his little hat because he is fucking Cute. fight me. And yeah, he's meditating on a mountaintop and he's found some inner peace. It seems, and thank goodness. And 
He's quite literally buried the hatchet. Yes. Yeah. His little... His war hammer is now... In, they planted it. Um, I don't know. It kind of looks like him and Taika Waititi rock monster, Korg. They seem to be going to different worlds at one point and, like... They're just, they're looking at, like, the the slaying bodies of monsters that are now skeletons and looking like they're, yeah, they're, like, going on, I don't know, a Greatest Hits tour or something. I'm not sure. The the, the plot is a little mysterious still, obviously, because it's, it's just a teaser. But Thor is hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy. He sounds, like, from the voiceover, he is, like, my super rowing days are behind me. It only brought me a lot of pain. I lost everyone I cared about. <laughs> and we're just we're just gonna take it easy for the rest of eternity, I guess. And yeah, that that's really all the trailer reveals. Also Tessa Thompson in a suit. Yes. Which did a lot for me personally. Yes. Um very brief shot of her in a nice in a nice suit and jacket. Ooh, it was nice. Looking disappointed. Oh, Being yeah. king oh. king of New Asgard. Oh god, no. I love everything in this trailer from the opening sequence of him aging as he's running through the trees and you get to see him in his cheesy 1970s outfit down to the fucking sweet child of mine playing because that is that is a very dear song to me all the way down to the end when lady thor appears Lady Thor. Yes, I am hyped Yay. for Lady Thor. I'm actually <laughs> super hyped for Lady Fucking Thor. Fucking lay it on me. Because as much as I do like the Thor <laughs> films, uh, even sort of the second one, even though I acknowledge it's not good, the treatment of Jane uh, is is bad. Like, mm-hmm. I can tell, you can tell that, <laughs> and from the interviews I've read and th- things that are obvious... Uh, in like the filmmaking process, they really go back and forth a lot on what to do with Jane. Like there was a point in writing the second film where they were going to like acknowledge the fact that they don't have much of a romantic connection other or they don't have much of a like deep personal connection outside like an initial romantic fling, which is true. But then mm-hmm. they try to go back on that and try and just make it a true love story, which is super weak. And then they just either Natalie Portman didn't want to come back or they just wrote her out of fucking Ultron and um, Thor Ragnarok. And yeah, you can tell that they, they, they struggled with what to do with Jane's character and her relationship with Thor. They struggled with a lot in Ultron. Listen, we don't talk about Ultron. Yeah, they struggled with a lot in Ultron. And I know that fucking Natalie Portman didn't want to come back, uh, which is understandable. And so I'm hoping... Apparently, uh, if, like, my my fucking gossip sources are correct, Taika Waititi talked her into it, I'm hoping that they, they do her some justice. Uh-huh. Wherever they take the Lady Thor storyline, because there's a lot of fodder in the comics for them to utilize. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm super excited. Honestly, I think Taika Waititi is an excellent director. I think he did a great job with the last film. I think he really understands... Thor's character and is finally fleshing out uh, (laughs) what at least I'd like to see out of Thor in the MCU, what Thor deserves anyway, to have an emotional arc because he's gone through so much. And one of the things I love about the MCU is they are able to incorporate a lot of the more obscure storylines from the comics so you don't go into the films knowing exactly what's going to happen. I think you're going to get a lot of that with Thor's storyline in the film anyway and Gore the God Butcher as the villain. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of storyline for Lady Thor, but you know, I do have faith that Taika Waititi will be able to do her justice and even though there's not a lot of lore her story is very interesting. Uh-huh. So I'm excited to see what they do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lady Thor books. I'm also really hoping that they don't just do a Captain Marvel, where it's just like, yeah. she's a woman! Yeah. And that's like the whole, <laughs> that's like the whole conflict of the movie. Her hero. Oh my of. god. <laughs> do, do you remember that trailer, Bliss? The Captain Marvel trailer? I... No? 
No, okay. That may I have be to, stopping a feminist I have for to, a second. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I gotta go find it. But there is a moment where, and it's like, it's it's like a fake trailer. It's like it feels it's, fake. It's like a comic book dude's like worst nightmare yeah. for a trailer because there's like you know there's like shots of of Carol Danvers, you know Brie Larson, Carol Danvers doing stuff, and there's voiceover, and then a title card fades into screen, and it says hero, and then the O fades away, and it just <laughs> says her. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. Like that shit. Oh. And, and, and I was just like, oh. The scene in, um, at the end of Endgame, just the big fuck off space alien battle on the side of a hill scene where just all the female characters just- All the women just, just were in a clump. Stand in a line and they just, they, I don't even remember what they're tossing around. It's like, I think it's the Infinity Gauntlet with like a few of the gems- that they're trying to get into it. I don't remember. But there's just this long extended sequence where all of the women just get together for a girl power moment. Uh, don't they do... So- <laughs> which is a little embarrassing. <laughs> I think it's something to do with Tom Holland. I think he has the gauntlet no, or yes, the I think, or something. I think Spider-Man has one of the Infinity Stones and they literally toss him around like a football. Which is funny like and, and like fine for a... For a little tight, for a small little sequence in that fight scene, just wish that they didn't have the huge cheesy like pose for girl power moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, it. and this this is I like I you actually just, could have just shown the women being competent superheroes instead. <laughs> <laughs> and like I actually, I mean, Captain Marvel was fine. I I didn't uh like it, it didn't like blow my socks off or anything, but it was cute and I liked it and I liked the like nostalgia of like the the 90s and everything and um, i liked i liked sam jackson i liked him getting to flesh out nick fury a yeah little bit, yeah rather than cute. just him being the cool mysterious leader guy he got also, a little bit of characterization that was fun yeah that was really fun and i like the the lesbian chemistry because that was canon i don't, <laughs> I don't care what anybody says but like yeah it was it was pretty basic in any in every other sense yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't a knockout standalone super thrill. There it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh uh-huh. Yeah, so the, the, sc- the title cards go like, in 2019, discover what makes her, and then A and O fade up, and it's a hero. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, yeah. wow. I'd rather. I'd rather not. <laughs> and this is coming from somebody who, like, I was moved by the nothing to prove to you line. Mm-hmm. I know that's cheesy, but, like, I have a superhero have, movie. Yeah. It's, they're cheesy. It's that's a fine. superhero movie, and I have cheesy needs. And I was like, ah, yeah, same. But, like, there's a limit. And I found it, and it was the, the hurrah hero bit. <laughs> Yeah, and the Captain Marvel as a film kind of left me kind of cold, which was a shame because I like Carol Danvers, and I think her appearances in the other Avengers films have been good. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, the movie felt very... The movie felt kind of rushed, kind of like, oh yeah, this one. Like, it kind of just like tacked on and just kind of shoved in our hands. Like, we were kind of like, oh, okay, so, like, all these other movies are happening like the rest of the the rest of the MCU is happening and they were like yeah don't forget this one and it's like it's a girl and, and it's like <laughs> it's a girl this time like, <laughs> oh thank you and that's that's like her only trait too yeah like, it's that <clears throat> it kind of felt she's like the girl one <laughs> it kind of felt like a, <coughs> the doctor shoving the baby in your arms but like you weren't pregnant does it so, feel uh, like that Kelsey? <laughs> Is that a circumstance you're familiar with? No. Well, yes, but no. Um. That's clear. (laughs) There's a story there, but we don't have enough time to unpack that. Yeah, I don't. It's it's a long. Um, but like, yeah, it just felt kind of like, oh, thanks for the afterthought. Like, yeah, or just that the i the the concept. Of a woman superhero was enough to carry the film. Yeah. Like it was fucking Smurfette. Yeah. Like, oh, she's, she's one she's of the girl, girl. ones. Like, and that's, like, that's the whole right. character trait. Thank you. 
I and like again, I like Carol Danvers, and the movie wasn't bad. Like I thought it was like a fun time. No, it wasn't awful. It was just no. kind of mediocre. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. It was pretty mediocre, and like yeah, it was better than Ultron. Um, but like that's not hard. Yeah, and it was fine. It was. It was basically Ant Man, but with a woman. But with a woman. Yeah, and it was like eh, fun. Like, I am looking cause... forward to the Marvels, though, because you'll have three strong female heroes. Uh, so maybe this time it will be better. I mean, yeah, the, the, they can't all just be the woman. Yeah. That <laughs> they have to have some other character trait as well. Also, um, the Ms. Marvel trailer, I think, uh, looks pretty cute. It looks really that cute. Looks yeah, so I'm good. excited for that. That looks like superhero Scott Pilgrim. It looks fun. A little bit, yeah. yeah. It's very much Disney trying to market the MCU in a Disney XD market. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm here for but it. You know what? Aside, I'm yeah. here for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if they're going to fucking own everything, then I hope they can make a few good TV shows and movies out of it. Like, mm-hmm. what What am I going to do? Like, how- how could I possibly ask Disney to please make less money? Like, yeah. Yeah. And if it brings me Young Avengers, some sort of Young Avengers series, mm. please. All I want is a Young Avengers series. <laughs> well, um, uh, fucking, oh, I can't remember her name. Uh, America Chavez? Yes. She's going to be in it. I know. Yeah. I'm She's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's there's that. Mm-hmm. She's cute. That and with the um, multiverse of madness, I, I'm still hoping that for looks pretty good. Wanda's boys. Mm-hmm. Sam Raimi has come has come full circle and is now directing superhero movies again. I love you, Sam Yay! Raimi. I'm so happy to see you back, baby. Do you know what I love though? Is I also love how angry the neck beards and incels are. Oh my god, they're about, so mad. About Lady Thor and, yes, mm-hmm. Love and Thunder. And the fact trailer. that, yeah, Thor is a cuck now. Thor is a cuck what? now. <laughs> yeah. That is their biggest <laughs> complaint. Because he's, he's got feelings. He's got feelings see, and there's that's... a woman. <laughs> he cried a lot in the first movie. In the first movie, all of them are in tears all the time. Literally, like, nonstop. Revisionist crying. history. There was nothing <laughs> okay, funny in the whatever. first movie. And there was no one ever crying except for that cuck Loki. Yeah, okay, I guess. Literally, they refused to acknowledge that there was any humor in the first movie. At all. Yeah. Because no one ever remembers the moment where he chunks a coffee cup at the ground and screams, Another! (laughs) Another! Another. Or, I love, one of my favorite small things is that when he's walking around, he doesn't quite get what cars are. So he's just walking down the street and cars are always having to like stop or like honk at him and he just doesn't pay attention to yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Or when he barges into the pet store and is like, I need a horse! <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> like, that's funny! Give and me one of like, those oh, large enough to ride. You don't have horses, man. Just like birds. And he's like, I need one large enough to ride then. He's like, you're not understanding. I need, I have transportation issues. <laughs> God. <laughs> or just the part where, like, the Warriors 3 and Sith Found you. come to find him, and they're just walking down the streets because they just go to different worlds all the time, and they're they're like, hey, found you, buddy! And then they, like, they just fucking hug and cheer. It's, it's Or Kat <laughs> Dennings. Just, like, the existence of Kat, Kat Dennings. Kat Dennings' whole character. Yes. The whole time. Kat Dennings Everything... was just boobs. She wasn't I funny. I mean, she was both. She can be funny boobs. Yeah. <laughs> she is funny and has amazing boobs. She I can agree. be both. <laughs> I forgot that men don't hear humor when it comes out of a woman's mouth. No. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah. That oh God, are they mad? Are They're they so funny. So like, mad. again, the central tension of that film is the the falling out of two brothers who who loved each other very dearly and one discovering that he's been lied to and the other one discovering that the first has felt like an outcast his whole life and he was too oblivious to notice yeah. like 
it at the core of that film is a is a family drama. Yep. That's what Thor is. It's a family drama with space in Vikings. Space. Yeah. Like I, I don't really of, No, go ahead. I was going to say one of my favorite complaints that I saw was somebody saying that Thor has to deal with human emotions instead of god problems like he should be. And I'm like, "Oh, I saw oh, that." I was, so gods I, don't have emotions. I asked what a god problem oh was and then he blocked god. me. I mean, like I was like, "What is a god problem?" and uh, he couldn't think of anything. Because I guess. gods, there are so many gods in the Marvel <gasps> universe, so oh. many, which is the central problem that's going to be the issue in this film. Also, none of them are true deities. Not to be that guy. They're all just superheroes from different worlds. Not to be that guy, exactly. but um, I was raised Catholic, and uh, god problems are human problems. That's the only time <laughs> that they're problems, because the. Like I he think... fucking died for my sins or what the fuck ever. <laughs> but like, like Gore the God, what is it? The God Butcher, yeah. being the villain of this film, like it's gonna be a God problem anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't seem like he's spending a lot of time on Earth. It seems like he's out with the Guardians of the Galaxy, kicking around in space most of the time, having God problems, having God problems. <laughs> I guess because there's a God serial killer. I, on the loose. Yeah. It's... I mean, as godly as us mere mortals with video cameras can create. <laughs> Jesus but like Christ. With our human feelings. <laughs> this is my thing. This is why the first Thor movie, I think, works so well and is one of my favorites is because despite the cosmic scale and the weird costumes and the funny Shakespearean way that they talk sometimes, the central conflict of the movie is a family dynamic mm -hmm. which anyone with siblings you don't get along with can relate to or anyone whose father is a bit of a dickhead can relate to like that's what makes the first film work as thought as as far as i'm concerned is that kenneth brana and the writers were able to yes have a have a silly space viking movie but the central conflict of it the central narrative is a family not getting along. Yeah. And, like, mm -hmm. that's why it works, in my opinion, is because the emotional conflict at the center is very human. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't even have siblings. And I related to that movie. I guess I also, I have a dad who sucks. You do have a father sucks. who's a bit of a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dad who sucks. But, like, I, I felt it, like... The sad thing is that I always, like, identify with the, the black sheep of the family, and I'm the only sheep in my family, so it's kind of depressing. But, like, I identified with Loki, and I was like, oh, this sucks. Like, no one, Thor loves him, but didn't really get it, and all this stuff, and I, I empathized with Thor in that sense, too, and it was a really, it was a really well done movie. I think it's really, it's it still one of my favorite MCU films that, out of any of them. And, like, trust me, like, I would also think it would be cool if they just went fully, like, avant-garde, experiment, experimental with it and made a movie about what it would truly be like to be a deity living among mortals. But that's not what's going to happen. Like, they are not going to make that movie. Disney is not going to make that movie. So, since I'm operating under the certain assumptions about the sort of film Disney is willing to make, I, I would rather have a movie that has a lot of weird and wacky settings and characters, but ultimately is about... A relatable emotional struggle. Yeah, like, I don't understand. This is comic books. Do you want the Bible? I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I God and the it. devil do exist yes. in this universe. Satan and God are real characters in, in Marvel comic books. They are. That's the thing. But, like, are, do they want it to be more serious? You do understand that it's comics. Like, like, I get this a lot with nerds, because they don't seem to realize that the thing that they're upset about has been ridiculous the whole time. <laughs> like, Star Wars has always been stupid, my man. Star Wars has been stupid since the beginning. It's, it's stupid. And that's fine. I like lots of stupid things. But, yeah, it's... Yes, but... 
I think that's, no, I think you're truly right that they don't realize it's been stupid the whole time. I feel like when you watch something as a kid that it has a lot of, like, has a relatable emotional conflict, like Star Wars or like superheroes or or whatever it is, whatever thing you see as a kid and you it, like, moves you for the first time. You, because you are a kid and you are uncritical and you kind of, you don't have this cynicism that adults have when they approach media yet, things can affect you in a, in a bigger, deeper way. But they also, you, you kind of don't notice the stupid parts or you don't notice the, like, flaws in, in the material. Um, and when you watch it later as an adult with a, with an enhanced critical eye and a little bit of cynicism, you kind of you can see the stupid parts, but you still remember it fondly. You still remember this good feeling that it gave you. And then when you watch new stuff as an adult, because you don't have that initial nostalgia, that good feeling of like being moved by Han, Luke, and Leia and their their struggles as a kid, you're mm-hmm. like, who the fuck are these people? I don't care about any of them. This whole thing's dumb. Like, <laughs> and you you can't access that part of your your inner child where you just you had wonderment of like oh they're fighting the space nazis like <laughs> luke can do it i know he can he doesn't believe in himself but yoda will teach him or whatever i don't know i was never a fan of star wars <laughs> so i'm just <laughs> guessing at what people like about star wars <laughs> uh these days it's baby yoda apparently baby yoda or harry potter like again another thing i don't have a fucking <laughs> another thing i don't have an emotional connection to but like I grew up in the era of Harry Potter and now a lot of my friends look at it and they can, they can see the, the problems with it, um, like narratively or thematically or blah, 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 like unrelated from the problems of its author. Mm. Like this is just wholly unrelated from the person JK Rowling has turned into, uh, or always was maybe, but yeah, you can go back and see the like, the narrative issues, the thematic issues with a more critical eye, but it still, it still means something to you. Like the, these characters and worlds still mean something to you. And, you know, as they roll out movie after movie about they've put Dumbledore back in the closet or something. I don't know <laughs> what's happening with the Fantastic Beasts movies. I don't, I don't know. Um, There's like nine plots. They're flopping is what's happening. They're flopping hard. They're yeah. like nine plots to each movie. And I don't ever know which, which one is supposed it's to like be the a, main it's one? It's like a whole season of Game of Thrones worth of plots packed into to a two and a half hour movie. Anyway, um, yeah, like I, I, I think that is the thing: is that when you become a cynical adult and you try and look at this stuff that is cheesy, over the top entertainment with a with a cynical eye, you you're missing the fucking point. Like it's fine to critique things; it's actually good to critique things. Um, but the critique should always be done in good faith, and to be like, eh, the, the Thor movies aren't serious enough for me. That's a bad th- <laughs> faith critique as far as I'm concerned. Because that's not what those movies were ever intended to do. No, of course not. And I mean, here's the deal. They're still going to go see the film, and they're still going to jack off to Natalie Portman in private, while publicly railing against her with their hot takes of... Well, actually, it's not Thor. It's Jane Foster wielding the hammer. Because their goal isn't to enjoy the films. Their goal is the art of unenjoying things. (sighs) So yeah, the neckbeards are going to be mad. And I guess apparently Thor has been cucked. But I'm okay with that. (laughs) I don't know. It's a short one, but did we talk about the thing? I needed a happy one this week. Yeah, we (laughs) talked about the thing. Did we talk about the thing? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yay! (laughs) Do y'all have a happy? I started reading My Hero Academia. Yay! And I'm having fun. It's a good time. I am basically live tweeting it, and it's really the only thing that I tweet about anymore. And I just... (laughs) I just, I'm basically just live tweeting it at you without actually adding you. (laughs) But nobody else on my Twitter would give two fucks. I read it and it makes me happy. It's not my happy, it's my bonus happy. Okay, good. (laughs) 
What's your happy, babe? I don't really have a happy. Downer. Sorry, I don't. <laughs> I was, I've been really busy for the last two weeks. I went to the beach. That's not media specific, but whatever. Really... Fuck it. I went to the beach. <gasps> Yay! And that was fun. I sunburnt only my knees. Weird. Yeah. I uh, don't know what happened there. You didn't put something. But I went on primitive knees. camping in a tent on the beach and got very dirty and sunburnt my knees. And it was fun to be away from the internet for about, I don't know, 30. 48 yeah. hours. I will say this. Yeah, I am I am not I am on Twitter so much less frequently than I used to be. Um cuz I've had a Twitter since 2009 and initially I used it as basically a group text to keep in touch with my friends who lived all over the world and it was such a like fundamental part of my online socializing that it didn't even occur to me to stop using it even though Twitter as a platform had changed so much since then. And I have just recently just stopped using it because I'm at work all day and I can't have my phone out. And I don't fucking miss it. Not at all. Like, I miss old Twitter. Um, I miss Twitter from 10 years ago, but <laughs> I, I don't miss Twitter now that I'm no longer on it. And the only thing that bothers me is I feel like I'm not up to date on current events if I don't check Twitter once or twice. Anyway, speaking of social media, uh, <laughs> you can find us online... Uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I forgot all the places we were for a second. At Blissfully Show. We also have a website. It's blissfullystore.company.site. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, hi, hello, thank you for watching our YouTube. End of sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Just about had a stroke ending the episode, but until next time. Bye! Bye-bye, y'all! She was able to tell it was stupid the whole time because she has a dead inner child and is a cynical shell all the way to the core. <laughs>